it says it's recording. Okay, it is good. Um, just making sure. Okay. Yes, we are recording. Fantastic. Okay, so um, this is a positive and open space. This is where we come to learn and share ideas. Uh, post your questions in the chat. We have at least one fantastic tech ambassador in the region who's answering questions. If you see someone ask a question and you know the answer, go ahead and answer it. You don't have to be a tech ambassador. Even if you're not sure, you can say, I think that this is right. We are Keller Williams. We come from contribution. We give as much as, if not more, than we receive. I'm super hating my hair right now, Christy. Okay. <laughs> I hate the way it looks. All right. Because it's tech. Uh, we may encounter something dodgy or buggy, and that's normal. When that happens, we're going to say, we, and then after the call, we can go for our white claw walk or whatever we need to. We're not going to get frustrated in this space. We're not going to let that happen. We're not going to bang our heads against anything. So this is a point where I want to see everybody I can see go, we, all right, you guys are catching on. I love it. All right. 24-7 resources available to you. Your friend is KW Support answers.kw.com you can get to there by literally typing answers.kw.com into your browser or you can hit the question mark in the top right of your command and go to Keller Williams University that actually takes you directly into answers.kw.com I promise you you can learn in fact everything that's in my slides I took out of answers.kw.com they are there for you they're available 24 7 you don't need a person to go through them what's really cool is it's step by step with either videos, GIFs, or static images that step you through it. Uh, if you'd rather watch videos, you can go to YouTube, and these days there are so many people posting things that you could write, KW Command Reports, and you're gonna get lots of videos that show you how to get through them. You can also go to our Facebook groups, there are a ton of them. The two biggest ones I would say where folks are most active are KW Command and Command Your Conversion. I bet you if you've got a question, someone's already asked it and several someone's have answered. If you have something that you'd like to see command do in the future, please go to ideas.kw.com, search for it first and then vote it up if you find it. If you don't find it, add it and then paste it. Copy that link, the URL for that specific item into those Facebook groups and get other people to vote them up. We're very fortunate we work for a company that is pretty democratic when it comes to what do we wanna see in the, the application, in the platform. We get to decide, and the only way the developers work on it is if it's one of the highest voted items. They work from top to bottom. All right, uh, other trainings coming up because it's another way to, to learn things. Every Tuesday now at two o'clock, we're doing what's new. Next week, I'm gonna cover the commands dash, the campaigns dashboard, and a whole bunch of other new things that are coming out. We're gonna go over Hunter Gore's Facebook lead smart plan. Some of you who've been active on KW Command Facebook group or Command Your Conversion have seen Nick Baldwin's. Um, Hunter's done something a little different, pretty cool. He says it's working well. He's gonna walk us through what he did. And then I'm gonna return and do Teams again. So for those of you, I think Buddy, you were with us earlier on the Teams training. Um, yes, I'm gonna do that again on Thursday at two and we're gonna dig into pipeline management and we'll have Katie Womble, who is a director of operations for a pretty large team, talk to us about how their team is leveraging pipeline. All right, this recording, because we are recording, this one and all the recordings of all of our trainings go up into my YouTube channel. Uh, if you search for Kelly Finnegan, and as long as you see that love of real estate banner on the top, you're in the right place. You'll see all of our videos there. I'll probably get these all up tomorrow afternoon. If not by tomorrow afternoon, definitely by Monday morning. I tend to play with these over the weekend. All right, let's dig in. I don't want that. Uh, what gets measured gets done. So I was in the corporate world for 16 years before uh, getting my license and moving into KW. Bye. Um, my CEO felt very strongly about metrics and he was right. What gets measured typically gets done. So that's what we're talking about today. What gets measured. So I'm going to show you some highlights here and you guys can always go back to the video and watch these. But again, I'm going to reiterate everything I'm going to show you is inside of answers.kw.com. So uh, Christy's going to do a demo for us and she's going to show you these things actually in the command platform. But these are some really interesting things that I, I tend to get people asking me about. So you're gonna see a database, database health <coughs> score for you. This is how that score is calculated. The most important things are name, phone number, email address, and physical address. Can anybody tell me why those are the most important? Unmute. I will call on you. That's how you get in touch with them. 
and stay That's in touch. exactly right, Larry. All right, it is incumbent upon us as agents to remain in emotional proximity with our clients or our prospective clients. And we do that through a physical means, a little less so right now. We're gonna call this physical. We're face to face, voice to voice. We're not belly to belly, um, which would be ideal or virtual. Having someone's name and phone number makes it so you can call them. Also makes it so that you can personalize your emails to them. Having their email address makes it so you can send an email, put them on a monthly neighborhood nurture. Their physical address makes it so that you can actually send them their neighborhood information, send them postcards, show up at their doorstep, not in a COVID world, or show up now, stand six feet away and go, I just have a roll of toilet paper for you. I bet you if you did that in a neighborhood you're interested in farming, you'll get a deal out of it. Somebody needs toilet paper. I'm telling you right now, I do. You show up at my door, you will be my best friend forever because we are running out of toilet paper. Okay, in the goals section, there are a whole lot of goals versus activities in here. And I've got a, gotten a lot of questions about this, you guys. How do these actually get populated? It used to be, for those of you who've been with KW for a while may remember that on our old GCI trackers, we would actually have to enter the number of appointments. We'd have to hit the up button or the down button for the number of appointments we had that day, that week. And it kept a running log for us and would tell us our actuals versus our end goal. Because when we set our goals at the top, we start with where we want to end up with the profit number. What do we want to earn? What do we want to walk away with? And then we do all these fun conversions and get all the way down to the number of appointments we have to have in order to reach that profit goal. These days, command doesn't make you do that. It doesn't, it, it's not actually allowing you to go in and say, I held these this many appointments. What it is using is your opportunity pipeline for the vast majority of these. Leads and contacts, it's actually looking at how many contacts are in your database and how many leads have come in, either because you manually entered them or because they're automatically coming in from your Facebook leads or any Zapiers that you've got going on, or because you took a lead in your uh, database and then changed it to a contact, it becomes a contact. Appointments set, appointments kept, agreements under contract and closed, this is all populating based on what's inside your opportunities pipeline. So one of my favorite things I heard at Family Reunion was Julie Youngblood in one of her classes. And she is constantly, she's got a huge team, and she brings people into the team, trains them, trains them up, gets them um, into production. If they flail around or they or they they kind of hit a certain number of flags for her, she moves them out and finds a new one to replace them. And what I heard her say was, if she's working with agents and they get a lead where someone's maybe a year, two years, even three years out from buying, selling, or investing in real estate, and they say that lead sucks, her response to that is always, nope. No lead sucks. If they've given you a timeline, it's a great lead. What you've just said is how long you're going to be in the business. Now, unless you're retiring next year, and even if you are, that's kind of unacceptable. Because if you've got to book a business, you want to retire in a year, and you've got three years of business to book, you can sell that. That's called retirement. You could also just level up your team and make money off of every deal and not work another deal again. So it's really important, and the reason I bring that up is when someone gives you a timeline, they need to become an opportunity right away. Even if that timeline is three years out, because that's how you know, that's how you remember to monitor and nurture them. Appointment set is looking at all the appointments scheduled, you enter on the details tab of your opportunity. Appointments kept is looking at how many have surpassed the date that you put in for the actual appointment, which means if you didn't hold that appointment, you guys have got to go update that date to the new appointment or just remove it because it's counting that as an appointment kept. Your agreements, once you move something into the active phase, it's calling that an agreement because otherwise why would you put it under active? Active means you've signed some form of agency with them, buyer agency or a listing agreement. Uh, under contract means that you have moved them from active to under contract. Again, if you're getting ready to submit a commission or what you might've done as a green sheet, if you've got a contract signed, whether you're representing a buyer and the contract's been um, approved, all sides have signed it and you're officially under contract or you've got a listing, and again, all parties are under contract, you've got to move that to the under contract phase so your reports are measuring what you're doing, measuring your activity. And the same for close. Once you move it into close, that's when that counts. One of the really cool things about this is that you can actually compare your business to other businesses within the KW ecosphere. 
Now I've put a bold law on the bottom here because I think that's really important to remember. Don't compare your insides to other people's outsides. So if you're comparing yourself to uh, someone who's got a million dollar goal, then no, you're not gonna feel adequate if your goal is 100,000 this year. It's never a bad idea though to take a look and see. Because I think generally speaking, we are all our own worst enemies. Um, we vastly underestimate what we're capable of. And what's cool, when you turn on that toggle, the dark blue bar will show you the comparisons and there's a couple of different ways you can compare yourself to others. You can look at your profit tracker. It's gonna show the progress of your estimated uh, profit against what your goal was. And again, it recalculates based on what you move into the closed phase. So if you're actually closed on something, but it's still sitting in under contract, if you don't move it to closed, it's not gonna count on your profit tracker. And you can look at this both by month and year. Other reports on that same page talk to you about activities, your goal conversion rates, your goal breakdown. And these, these are some really super cool reporting, you guys. It shows you, this is what I was talking about earlier, the conversion rates as you go down. So at the top, obviously, um, the probability of earning with a lead is much lower than once you get all the way down into closed. And this one's my favorite, looking at your GCI goal breakdown. So I don't know how many people on this call, I'd like to hear, um, how many people on this call have been to family reunion? Unmute and say me. Me. Perfect. Me. Did you guys go this year? Yes. yes. I went last year, not this year. Last year, okay, awesome. Okay, so this year, no one was allowed on stage without showing Gary a P&L. And you know what he was looking for, you guys? Does anybody know? Profit. Profit. He wanted to know the breakdown. Because if you're following the KW models and you're running your P&L against the KW budget model, then you should be running 40, 30, 40. You should be walking away with 40% profit. And if you're not, if you are spending, say, $5,000 a month on a Boomtown website and lead follow and da-da-da-da, and you're not getting a return on investment for it, you are spending too much on that and you need to be in command. Now, he wasn't requiring that everybody be in command. What he was requiring is that if you're going to get on my stage and talk about how you run your business, you better be running a 40% profit margin or close to it. And it's not impossible. Um, it's not also not terribly easy. It is, however, simple if you follow those models. All right, I'm gonna shut up. I'm gonna turn it over to the fabulous Christy Burkett. Christy, I'm gonna stop sharing. I'm gonna let you share. Or if you'd rather, honey, if you want me to drive, I'll share and drive or whatever you'd prefer. That's okay, I can share. Okay, awesome. I will monitor your chats for you so people can ask questions. I'll help, I think Kristen and uh, I think I saw Monica was in here too. So we're gonna watch and let you teach us. Okay, so I'm gonna come back to the home screen of commands. And everybody's seeing this? Yeah. Yes. And then on the left, scrolling down to the bar graph is report. And one of the first things that you should do if you have not done is set up your goal setting. Um, let me move you guys. I'm having trouble seeing you. Um, so oh, you I've look around I've, our beautiful faces. <laughs> I've already um, done that piece. So i um, sorry if it looks a little different than yours. Um, typically, if you go under goals and then goal setting, it will take you through step by step as most of command is um, very user friendly. Mm -hmm and walk you through setting your goals and your conversion rates and then reviewing them and everything. If you've never done this before, you guys, there's probably someone in your market center, your team leader, your productivity coach, or even your market center tech trainer. Um, your MCA as well is well-trained in looking at financials um, and understands the budget model and can help you guys set your goals based on what you want your profit to end up with. And then of course you can adjust them. Um, and you'll see it does have 2019 goals. I don't know how many people who put them in in 2019, but we'll also have for 2021. Before long, we'll be needing to do those. 
Um, and then when you set all of that up, you'll start to have some of the data that is feeding um, what Kelly shared, which is profit tracker, your activities breakdown, conversion, BGI breakdown, those types of things. And if you are on the first page that opens when you go to the reports, the dashboard, it will give you um, an overview, including your database health. And this is one of the areas where you can compare with your market center or agents in your state. You'll see here towards the right side, there's a compare button. And then the menu opens for your options of where you want to compare yourself to other agents. I love that. Uh, same thing down here at the bottom for your database activity score, keeping track of yourself and then comparing again, if you wanna do agents in your market center, agents in your site or state. Um, and I thought this one was kind of cool, the agents in production bracket above mine. I actually like that one and yours, right? So again, it's about comparing apples to apples. So I can look at, okay, people who are in my bracket, so I'm a quarter capper, I'm a half capper, I'm a full capper, <coughs> excuse me. I can look at people in my bracket, but if I'm trying to level up this year, then I can look at people in the bracket above me and say, okay, so if, would you mind, honey? Yeah, thank you. Um, mm -hmm. So it shows that in the bracket above hers, um, percentage reached out to in the last 30 days, you can see Christy's doing pretty good. Smart plan. Awesome. Um, and then this over here, I'm not super familiar with other than um, that it's using your sources. Right, so this is gonna be, sources. yeah, and it's gonna be actually um, deals closed. So if you're not using the sources field inside your opportunities, so mm -hmm. the, the highest production agents, I can ask them, tell me last year, uh, what'd you spend on technology? And they'll tell me, because they'll know their p and Okay, uh, what'd you close in production? And they'll tell me. Generally, they'll give me a, a roundabout number and I'll say, okay, what percentage of that came from your sphere? What percentage of that came from leads you paid for? And the, the ones that really know their business and the ones that are constantly monitoring, because let's say they spent 50% of their leads came off of Zillow and that's, those are expensive. Those are really expensive leads and they want to move that down to 20% and they want to make up for the difference with leads that cost them nothing. This is a great way to see that because this is going to look at your opportunities and what you're actually closing what deals you're closing, not necessarily the stuff coming into your database so much as what are you closing deals on? Which means you've got to give it data. You got to feed it, right? If you're mm -hmm. not feeding your opportunity details, then you're not feeding your reports. And I think under the report, then it tracks where the opportunity breakdowns of everything is. So again, like Kelly was talking about, if you're not feeding them, it's not going to feed this report. And you can change that year and, and month as well. Yes. Exactly what I was just going to say. So um, year to date, month to date, and then of course the last month that has everything closed out. Um, and then you also can set it to show your database report, your goals report, in addition to this opportunities report. So database is going to show your contacts and what they're signed up for, where you have um, their, their details. Like I am not a birthdays person, so I literally have zero um, birthdays entered. But 95.65% of my contacts have their email addresses. And the one thing I was thinking after I was on this screen, when you go through the, the goal settings, it will default, correct me if I'm wrong, Kelly, but it will default to the percentages and you can adjust those if you want to. These are a conservative um, baseline that they give. And then as you 
do more transactions and enter more transactions, it will start to adjust on its own. So there's, there's two things. The first piece is if you're a brand new KW agent and you don't know what your conversion is from a lead to a contact, a lead is someone you have a one-way conversation with. They become a contact and you start having two-way conversations with them, right? They're not only receiving your things, but they're responding. They're asking you questions. They're asking for more. Uh, when you call them, they answer. They don't avoid you. When you text them, they answer. Um, contacts to appointment set, appointment set to kept, kept to actually you go on the appointment and you get either your buyer agency or your listing agreement signed from there. All of those that you go under uh, agency with, how many of them do you get under contract? How many of them do you get under closed? If you're a brand new agent, leave them as is. This is based on over 30 years of data. This, these are the averages. If you are a seasoned agent and you don't know your numbers yet, now's the time to start tracking. Because when you build out your goals for the year, if you want to make a million dollars in profit and you don't know what your conversion is from an appointment kept to an agreement signed, you don't know, for example, whether or not you need to work on your scripting. If you don't know, for example, that when you make phone calls, how many of them turn into appointments, then you don't know that you might need to work on your scripting. That when you're making calls, if you're not going for the appointment, well, then you're, you're missing out. And so your numbers are going to be very different than the averages. So a lot of people who are really in tune with their business, treating this like a business, are tracking everything. Over time, command will track for you as well, and it'll start to make recommendations. But again, this is an AI platform. The only way it learns is you, by, is you feeding it. So that means you have got to keep the details in your opportunities up to date so it can watch and learn and make recommendations to you for when you go to set your goals next time. If you do not feed it, you guys, it is not going to know. It is going to give you the national averages. Is this making sense, you guys? Okay. Uh, the the la I, one of my favorite agents that started the last year that I was an MCA, um, he wasn't getting the traction he wanted. And so we started tracking everything. And so then we figured out, okay, his problem was he wasn't going for the appointment. So we worked those scripts over and over. And when I say we, I don't mean we, he, he put in the work to do this. He found script partners and then he was getting the appointments and he was finding he wasn't getting agreements. He wasn't getting people to sign. So then he knew, okay, I've got to work on that. I've got to get more confident. I've got to go for the close. Once he started doing that, he'd worked his scripting out to get the appointments. He'd worked his scripting and his confidence around agreements. It was smooth sailing for him because once he got somebody, a, a client, he could fly to the end, no problem. He could manage their emotions and all the pieces of it. He was getting that client and getting that sign. If he hadn't been tracking, he never would have known it. Never would have known where to put his focus. And he wouldn't be as successful as he is now. He would have dropped out of real estate. And that would have been sad because his clients are lucky to have him. We were lucky to have him. I was lucky to be his friend. Um, I want to show you one more thing on the reports tab. You can actually export your report in a PDF or an Excel spreadsheet. So if you'd like to have the paper copy and you want to sit down and Look at it that way. Um, it's right or in the upper right-hand corner. Yeah, if you're mm. if you're a member of a team and you've got, um, or you're a member of a PC group and they want to see it because not all, your PCs can't see all your stuff. So your PC may ask be asking you on a weekly or monthly basis. Go download your report. I want to see what's going on. Because again, we we have to be. We really do better when we report out to others. Um, when I have to tell my girlfriends how much I drank and ate and exercised. It gets kind of embarrassing the fourth day in a row. Drank too much, ate too much, didn't exercise. That's pretty embarrassing on the fourth day. I'm like, okay, okay. At least I'm gonna exercise tomorrow. I might eat the same amount, I might drink the same, but I'm gonna exercise. And if you have an admin, you can have your admin be the accountability partner and ask you for these reports and have them help you to keep track. Just remember, don't fire them if they tell you you're not doing your job. Because <laughs> um, the truth so, is, we all manage up. <laughs> so the um, last little tab is email, which will give you an email report. And honestly, Kelly, I haven't explored this much. Um, I don't even it's, know that it was in here last time I played on a report. Yeah, it's newer. It's definitely newer. Um, if you click upgrade email plan, it actually takes you into the marketplace. Um, I've been playing around with this one as well. 
Uh, one of the outstanding questions that I have is um, how is how completely is this populated? Mm -hmm. um, excuse me. So if you bear with me for a second, because I know I got an answer because I wanted to understand, is this only coming out of MailChimp? Is it coming out of our smart plans? Because I don't, I'm not familiar with whether or not we can actually see our smart plan open rates. So I did get an answer. And it's not sufficient. So we're going to just leave okay. that there and we're going to circle back around to that. Um, Kelly, I would almost say that it's probably not MailChimp only because I do not have, I still have that glitch where I can't use my MailChimp. And mm -hmm. I have like 341 emails sent and all I use is smart plan emails. Smart plan. So it's gotta be smart plans. It's gotta be coming off of the mail gun provider. Um, and before that mail jet. Um, okay. Yeah. Yeah. I think you're right, Kristen. It's gotta be, because if you think about it, even if you, if you had uh, MailChimp access, you can actually go see any one of your campaigns that you send out. You can see all mm -hmm. of that, the MailChimp. Um, platform itself, because uh, they track all of these as well. Um, oh yes, and here's the other way we know too, is that we have a limit of 5,000 per month, which actually corresponds with the MailChimp though. So um, that's interesting. Hmm. Yeah, we're gonna have to circle back on this one and get a bit I more have deep. a feeling it also says that under our command mail and settings. I think when I go to my command mail settings, it says it corresponds to the same number, 341 out of 5,000 cent. Interesting. Okay. And I, I know that uh, Keller Williams is now a mail service provider, um, even though we're still leveraging uh, some mail gun uh, sending, we are legally considered a um, email service provider. So we have to be watching spam. The spam number in particular, so I had reported out to our market center tech trainers that a half a percent, so that was something like one in, um, yeah, one, I think I told you guys like one in, in 500 can't be marked. We've got a correction on that. It's actually 0 0.05, one oh. in 2000 can't be marked as spam. Okay. Yes. So we have to be super careful about who we're sending emails to. The good news is you're at zero. So you're in good shape. <laughs> and 33% of your emails are being opened, which I'll tell you guys, that's actually a really good open rate. Anything over 20% is a good open rate. Hi, Teresa. Hi. So does anyone have any questions around the reporting section, the reports that are available, how they get populated? I don't have a question about that, Kelly, but I do have a question about what you were just speaking about. Are, are there ways we can email campaigns to a large number of our contacts? I'm just a little confused on that. Do we do it, is that gonna be through command or is, will it be through MailChimp or? How is that working? So it's right now you can put, if you've got a, let's say you've got a thousand people in your database, you can put them all on smart plans with emails and that is mass email, right? So uh, the, the monthly neighborhood nurture or the biweekly neighborhood nurture, if you've got a thousand contacts, they've all got a physical address, they've all got a neighborhood, you can put them all on that nurture and that is mass email. And that uses, that's command mail, which is uh, leveraging a provider called Mailgun. However, it is command mail and it's all inside of command. You can also create email campaigns in the campaign section. And I did do, um, I did a, I think a training about that the week before last. And there's a video, Larry, that you can watch inside of my YouTube channel about that. Um, that one does leverage MailChimp. And so you basically create audiences and you can leverage inside of command there um, in the campaign section under email, there are two different template designs you can use. They're very text light, very, um, it's like a little bit of text, an image and a button, because that's the best kinds of emails you can send out. Um, you can do that and it will leverage MailChimp. Now you're doing it through the command platform. It is leveraging MailChimp to send them out. And if you're using the free MailChimp account, you can only send up to 5,000 emails a month and only one audience at a time. So I might, like my audience right now is all of the leadership in the Carolinas. 
all of our OPs, team leaders, MCAs, market center tech trainers, everybody. And uh, hopefully starting next week, I'll be getting an email out to them. If I decided, if I get that email out on Monday and I decide on Tuesday that I also want to send an email out to all my previous clients when I was practicing real estate, I will not be able to do that on Tuesday because I used my audience on Monday. I can delete that audience. I can create a new one with all my previous clients, but I can't do it for seven days. I have to wait. MailChimp, because it's my free account, I have to wait until the following Monday. I can create the email. I just can't add it. I can't change my audience for a full week, and I can only have one audience at a time because I have a free account. Now, if I wanted to yes. send all those people monthly neighborhood nurtures, that's fine. That's in smart plans. There's nothing stopping me from doing that. I can hit my whole database, no problem. And I can choose who goes on it and who comes off. No, no wish issues about audiences. When you leverage um, campaigns and MailChimp, it's a little different right now because of the, the collaboration we have with MailChimp. That is probably going to change over time. We are probably going to move away from MailChimp altogether and be complete mail, uh, command mail. The reason we're not doing it completely is because of this concern that how do we make sure that our system ensures that if, if I make a boo-boo, Larry, and I send an email to 20,000 people, and let's see, I can only have one in every two. I can't even have one in every two. And however many it takes, 10 people, I, I can't do the, the math that fast, sadly. Um, market is spam. When my account gets shut down, so does yours. Oh, wow. And that's a problem. Yes. Now, right now, because we're leveraging MailChimp, they can just shut my account down through MailChimp and you're still good to go. But if we move all of that away from MailChimp, we've got to make sure we've got the protocols in place to make sure that one agent doesn't spoil it for 180,000. Well, one reason I was asking is I have a MailChimp account that I pay for, which gives me up to, I think, two audiences. And awesome. I'm trying, trying to decide if I can should cancel that and just use the free version through command or if I should just keep paying that $30 or $40 a month that I'm paying now. Are you sending out emails right now? Um, yes, I'm usually sending out one or two email blasts um, a month. Are you getting any deals out of it? Not yet. <laughs> <laughs> so there's a couple of things that you want to think about. Um, are you sending the right content? Um, you need to go into your MailChimp account and look at your, oh my. <laughs> you have a new best friend. You only bought one and they had a bunch? I only buy one. It's oh. one per guest. Oh, okay. Wow. Was that the biggest pack? Yeah. Okay. And they have AngelSoft too. Okay. I like AngelSoft better, but I'll take that. You Thank you. What? Good job. You're a good job. Good job. Uh, can yeah, I have my card? Yeah. I got to go to the store. <laughs> sorry. Um, sorry, guys. Yeah, yeah, uh, I've, I've mainly been sending them out to um, agents when I get a new listing or a price adjustment. That's the main thing I've been using MailChimp for. I see. Okay. You can do that. Um, so when I used to do that, I wouldn't do it in MailChimp. I would actually do it inside of my KW. Maybe it's loud. Yeah, Thank you. you. I would do it inside of my Gmail account and I would go into MLS and I would export a spreadsheet that had all their email addresses and send it through Gmail. Um, and I would just put everybody in the BCC so I didn't have to use a MailChimp or something like that. Okay. If that's what you're using it for, you can do that. As long as you can export email addresses out of your MLS. Um, in our MLS, I could do a, like a search in an area. So I could drop my pin where the listing was. I could go all the way around that area, say, I don't know, three miles out, 10 miles, whatever I wanted. And then I could change the columns to add any agent that had bought or sold and just get their email addresses. And I could pull those out and paste them into um, the BCC and send an email that way and never have to use an external email provider. Okay. I'll, ch I'll check into that. Yeah, that might be one way to save uh, money on that. Um, typically, if people are paying for things, my, my questions are always going to be, what's your ROI on it? How many deals did you get out of it? Are you, are you getting more than what you paid because if you're not dump it because you're not getting anything out of it the other thing is sometimes you're not getting it not because you're not sending good content maybe you're sending it to the wrong people or the content's not right for the audience so that's why i always tell people to go look at their open rates their click-through rates their um unsubscribe rates and spam because that's bad right we don't want to be spammers nobody wants spam I'm just peeking here inside the 
chat to see if I missed yeah, anything. Yeah, there's a... What's going on in there? Can you update the source right from contacts? Go to the contact card. Oh, yeah, yes, good. Nice, Kristen. Is there a way to delete or add your own sources? Not currently, no. I believe there is an idea at ideas.kw.com that needs to get voted up around that. It's a pretty exhaustive list. However, I'm, I'm sure it's missing something. I, I like Monica's answer. It's on the roadmap. That's our favorite response. Uh, and it'll get moved up in the priority on the roadmap if people go vote it up. Other questions, you guys? Now's your chance. No questions about anything. Hmm. Christy, honey, stop sharing for a second so I can see everybody's faces. I want to see how many people we have left. Sounds good. Oh, good. We've got, we still have a fair number here. Hmm. I feel like I need to call on someone. Buddy. Buddy. Do you have any questions, buddy? So I'm new to all this, right? Mm -hmm. Never been good with computers. I just kind of, I, I tune into these things every once in a while just to see if I have, you know, a light bulb that goes off. <laughs> but other than that, me currently, where I am, I'm just trying to find contacts, just dialing, 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 dialing. Yes. So that's kind of where I'm at. This, um, all this stuff, like I said, I tune in every once in a while just to see if I can have a little light bulb moment. But, um, just kind of plugging in when I can, how I can. Uh, but the, the whole program command and stuff is still, I still have a lot of bugs on my end. Like uh, even with the, like the KW app, I was, um, I can't even get it switched over to be an agent. You know, I'm like, oh. you can, no, that's not a problem. Actually, that's not a bug. You won't ever, it's a consumer app. You will only app. ever see it as a consumer. Okay. So, yeah. okay. So, well, yes, you your, so if let's say I'm your client buddy and yeah. I've got your branded app and I'm doing searches, um, you can see what I'm doing through command in the contact record for me inside of your command. Okay. You cannot connect. You can't like talk to me through the app because gotcha. it's my app. I'm the consumer. Um, you give it to me and your connection to me is through command. It's through the actual platform. Um, and then, and then another issue with that too, is I can't even look myself up on the, uh, on the app. I'm not even registered as an agent on there. When did you join a KW? Uh, uh, I'd say March, beginning okay. of March, early February. So I just want to try something really quick on the app. I want to see if I can find you. It may be a matter of just you being new in the system. Yeah. Um, but so, so that's, that's kind of stuff I've been working on, just little bugs here and there trying to figure out how to use the system. And buddy, what I would recommend to you, hon, is um, go to KW Connect. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to show you a page really quickly on KW Connect um, that I always recommend, even to seasoned agents. Um, let's go here. I'm going to share with you. I'm going to pull up KW Connect. And I'm going to hover over technology and the second link down um that's because i've got the stop share so bear with me for a second while i move that can you see my uh, kw connect in the background i can okay good um so when i hover over technology the second link down is command your business this is module by module command itself so if you were to go through here go to recommended training and spend about 30 minutes a day Mm -hmm. Within three weeks, you will have worked through every applet and you'll have a very general, um, healthy understanding of what you do in each applet and how it's supposed to work. So you, the first day, this, the first day is probably the longest one, right? Because we've got three 10 minute videos. So that one's about 40 minutes. Okay. And then tomorrow go do getting started session two and work your way down that page. 
rather than, uh, and I'm not saying I don't want you on these videos, buddy, we'd love to have you every time. Uh, this will just give you kind of, they've, they've built it in a way where the knowledge is going to build on itself, right? So that sure. you're not kind of jumping into the deep end with a bunch of sharks without a fin or a shark gun. Uh, by the time you get into the deep end with the sharks, you will know you will be armed with all the tools to keep them from biting you. Sure. This will help you a lot. Yeah. This page is your friend. <laughs> You'll get this, I promise. You got this, man. I got it. It's you no big this. deal. That's right. Hey, Kelly. <laughs> I did try to look Buddy up in the app. Can you hear me? I can, mm -hmm. yes. Uh, I tried to look Buddy up in the app, and I don't see him. I do see him in the white pages, though. So maybe he wants to turn that in to support. I think it's yeah. probably worth it. Yeah, I've just done yeah, a search, turned, too. I can't I find him. I turned, I turned it into a support uh, okay. yesterday, yep. What market center are you in, buddy? Uh, KW Drive, Greenville, Mills Avenue. Greenville. Um, who South is Carolina. your market center tech trainer? Greenville, Greenville. I think it's Diane Blackwell. Oh, and yeah. I, yeah, and I talk to her all the time. Okay. She, she's probably like, God damn it, is that buddy again? <laughs> she's not. <laughs> she's like, oh, yay, it's buddy. I promise. <laughs> Good. I'm glad we she's don't never get that way. But... No, yeah, we never right. feel that way. Mm -mm. No. Nope. Sure. Sure. Whatever. Only mm -hmm. MCAs feel that way, and they're not on this call, so you don't have to worry about that. Gotcha. But no, I've had I've had tremendous support through the brokerage. Uh, they have training classes all the time. Uh, I I don't think I could have picked a better brokerage to go with. I mean, it's really really Yay. awesome over there. Yeah, I love it. That's great. That's yeah. great. I'm glad to hear that. Yeah, we love our agents, uh, and we love KW. Yes, no, nothing's perfect. Nothing ever is, and the more you put someone on a pedestal, the the more likely they are to fall off the pedestal, which is unfortunate, because uh, nothing's perfect ever. Um, this is a company that definitely wants you to succeed. It's trying to give you all the tools and support you need. Feeling the love. Good, good. Uh, okay, everybody, give. Christy, a big hug. We all need seven hugs a day. So we're going to all hug. Yay. And we're going to say thank you, Christy. Everybody take your mute off. Say thank you, Christy. Thank, thank you, Christy. Thank you, Christy. Thank you, Christy. And now well, say thank you, Kristen. And thank you, Monica. Thank you, Monica. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, everybody. Awesome. <laughs> all right, you guys. So that's it for today. We're going to wrap up. Um, I personally am so proud of Monica and Christy because you guys rock. Mwah. Hey, KB. They do rock. <laughs> Where do we get the recording for this, Kelly? It'll go into my YouTube channel. So when you go to YouTube, if you just type in Kelly Finnegan, you'll know you're in the right place if you see the, the black, white, and red uh, for the love of real estate. And I'll probably get it up tomorrow afternoon. All right. Can you post your YouTube channel? Because I, I was looking you up and I couldn't find you before. Yeah, bear with me. I've got it open. Um, it's because I'm not very popular. I don't know. <laughs> I doubt that. I don't. Here's, know. here's the tip. You're like it took me a while to. I just put it. It took me a while to find her, but when I did, Thank bookmark you. it. <laughs> yes. Well, and I don't have enough um, subscribers yet to change it to a URL I want. Now YouTube's like you have to have this many. I'm like, okay, well I'll be waiting around for a little while. <laughs> How many do you need? <laughs> yeah, I can't help remember. you out. I can't remember. I, I probably wasn't that many. It was probably like 100, and I think I was at 50. And I was like, well, okay, I'll just wait. We got a huge group. We'll send them your way, Kelly. Yeah, everybody go subscribe. <laughs> Let's go subscribe. Get me up to 100, and then I can have my own URL. Yeah, and then you can start, hey, welcome to my channel. <laughs> exactly. Go subscribe. <laughs> Give it to our kids. It will get liked a lot. Kelly, yeah, I, found to yeah. I found your channel. I found your channel. You did? Okay, good. Okay. Yeah, so yeah. it'll be there. Um, all the videos from this week will be there uh, probably tomorrow afternoon. If not by then, I'll get them up over the weekend because uh, I'm a techie dork that plays with tech over the weekend. Okay. All right. Thank, thank you guys you. for tuning in. Go have a good evening. Okay, thank you, Kelly. Thank you. All right, you guys. Bye, Bye. everybody. Bye. <clears throat>